Hey everybody, uh, we're here live with Curtis Shanley, and you know him a little bit now. We're also here with his girlfriend, Tanya Tapp, who, if you don't know yet, uh, hopefully you'll get to know her, uh, because she plays a real important role in his life and in this story. Uh, and you probably don't know me, because I'm usually on the other side of the camera. Uh, my name's Andrew Glazer, and I produced the segment you just saw. And what we wanted to do was something a little different, and that is continue the conversation with you, our viewers. Um, the way we'll do that is, uh, I hope you'll tweet questions to the hashtag VA at home, or you can also uh, send, record uh, Instagram video questions and post them to this, with the same hashtag, hashtag VA at home. Uh, so we're going to start with the first question, which actually comes from our correspondent, who unfortunately couldn't be here. Uh, her name is Gianna Taboni. She did a great job. And her message uh, to you is, what up, Curtis? Would you encourage young people to join the military and deploy, given the VA care you got? Uh, yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, the VA, unfortunately, is broken right now. And with all this media coverage and great people like yourself getting the story out there and more veterans standing up and demanding action, it's going to get fixed. The military is a great system if you're a young person and you want to learn discipline and you want a springboard to the rest of your life, you want to go to college and get a degree, I mean, that was the greatest experience of my life, you know? And it has given me so much. There is so much support out there for veterans. Um, I just got a call today and I got invited on a three-day, all-expense-paid fishing trip, you know, by a, a veteran support group. And so there's help out there, you know. Uh, definitely, I wouldn't let it discourage them. The goal of the piece was to put a human face on a problem that had kind of migrated to Washington and became a story, a political story. And it was easy to forget that it really is about tens of thousands of veterans like you that were not getting the care that they deserved. And I'm wondering if you and your uh, experiences have come across other veterans who are going through similar things. Oh, yeah. Uh, I, I meet them every time I go to the VA. Uh, I meet them at school. Um, you know, on the college campuses, the stories that we tell are pretty universal. You know, it's kind of one of those things where you kind of shake your head, oh, the VA, oh, yeah, you know, let me hear your horror story. You know what I mean? Everyone's got their story about the VA to tell. It's kind of like going on deployment and you come home and you got deployment stories to tell. You know, um, I met a Vietnam veteran who I became friends with. He's, you know, 70-something years old and... I go eat lunch with him now, and you know he's been dealing with the same problems his whole life. So it's definitely not uncommon. So why did we, the media, take so long to to blow this up, or why why did Washington take so long to to look at these problems? If all of you have been talking about these problems for for as long as you have, you have to understand that the veteran the veteran community is very prideful. And it's very, we're proud of our VAs. You know, that's, that's ours. We're not saying that we hate the VA or we hate the people that work there. There's very awesome people that work there. There's very nice people, you know. It's just the system's messed up. And it's, the veteran community is very much a close-knit community where you kind of keep it in-house, you know. You don't, I mean, it's hard enough to get guys to go and seek help at the VA, let alone to go there and not get the help that they need and then expect them to go through all that and then speak up to some media outlet about, you know what I mean? It's very draining on someone to go through all that kind of crap and it's just kind of like, it's been bred into this community where you show up at the VA and it's just this community of like, oh, well, get ready to get, take it in the rear because that's how it is here. It's just, that's how it is. Who do you think screwed up here? I mean, this has been going on for a while uh, to the point where there's hidden, allegedly hidden wait lists right. where uh, veterans like you can't go back to work. You're not asking for anything else. How long has this been going on? Or I guess the question is, how, how has it been allowed to go on for so long and who screwed up? You know, that, that question is so complicated. It's, it's as complicated as the VA is. You know, I'm assuming how I look at it is you know, the VA started off as an organization and, you know, as 
uh, America got larger and we got into more wars and you know we started dealing with all these things like PTSD and that kind of stuff the bureaucracy grew with that and the, and the the what the doctors have to go through the system that they have to use in order to provide us care is not conducive to providing us with the best care they have to lobby for us to get us certain medications or, or, or certain devices or something like that so I think it's just been this kind of system that's just it's made up so many rules and so many rules and so many rules that it's just so intertwined and, and mixed up that there's as a regular veteran as a, as a young man getting out of the Marine Corps you, to circumnavigate that bureaucracy is impossible you mentioned medications and we got some tweets about uh, the uh, the VA's uh, proclivity to prescribe pain medication. Right. Um, this is something that a lot of veterans have talked about. Our HBO program reported on that to some degree. Right. In your experience, have did, and I'm not asking you to name doctors by name, but did you feel as though there was a push for you to take pain medications as sort of a stopgap until you got more serious treatment? Absolutely. Tell me about um, that. I showed up and that's the first thing I made absolutely clear. I'm here because my back hurts and I absolutely do not want pain medicine. Because I wanted them to understand that I am not here to seek out pain medicine. I will not be pacified by that. Pain medicine is not going to heal you. That's what I can tell people out there that are dealing with this crap. You have to make a huge hard step because it's so easy to take that medicine and feel better. You have to be very careful of how you use it because the VA, they will give you as much as you can fucking handle. Do you know people who got hooked? Uh, I have suspicions of friends and that kind of thing. But they don't talk about it? You don't talk about it. You know, um, I'll... You know, it's easy to get hooked on pain pills. They make you feel fucking great. And when you're in pain every fucking day and you wake up in the morning and you're in pain, I don't know what else to tell you other than not being in pain is the greatest fucking feeling in the world. But it's, you feel guilty because you know that you're taking this narcotic and it can be abusive, you know? And I started getting worried that I'm liking it. I like not being in pain. And, and feeling good off narcotics, but that's never going to provide me the answers or give me the life I want to live, ever. Uh, someone named Derek G. tweeted a question. He asked uh, sort of a, a specific question, but let me generalize it a little bit. He wanted to know, do you know of anyone who's gone back to active duty just to get benefits quicker to get? Yeah, that's a, that's a crazy good question because I thought about that. Um, you thought about actually... Well, I've thought about not my situation. They'd never let me back in. But, you know, I've thought about, God, would it, be, would it have been easier to re-enlist? And then once you get in, you know, they're kind of... They're contractually obligated to take care of you. And you have to be 100% before they discharge you, you know? So there's some, you know, my Marine buddies that got blown up in Iraq and that kind of stuff they were kind of forced to stay in the Marine Corps because if they left, they knew that they weren't going to receive uh, medical care. Um, so, yeah, that's a funny... I, I think that's true. I think if I was enlisted, it, it's, it's hard to say because if I was enlisted, I think I would kind of get the same route. If I was enlisted and I said, hey, my back hurts, I'd get laughed off the fucking... be sent to my room and told stop being a bitch you know it would be exhausting to go and to get the MRIs and that kind of shit yeah I, I want to talk about Tanya's role in your life um, Tanya you met Curtis after he was already back and injured right yes did you know what you were getting into at that point uh, no I mean it's not yeah well, no, related to I his injuries a, no nothing I've I was never involved a lot with what was going on with veterans and the VA, so meeting Curtis, I've learned a lot. Um, just It just gives me a better idea of really what's going on, how many people are out there are dealing with it, and, and sad. 
Curtis, tell me what role Tanya's played in your life, um, because I think it's probably, there's probably a lot of veterans whose wives, husbands, girlfriends, boyfriends didn't, didn't enlist, but now they're right. basically enlisted and they're, right. they're working their asses off to take care of you guys who are hobbled by uh, your injuries. Tell me, wh what kind of role has she played? Well, Ta Tanya's my everything. Um, you know, not only does she provide financially for both of us, um, she takes care of me physically, emotionally. She, um, I am not an easy person to live with. My pain makes me very angry. It makes me frustrated. I lash out, and she has never once uh, reciprocated that in any way. She's been very patient. She's just been to hell and back. You know, I met her in speech class. She knew I was a veteran. I don't make it known that I'm hurt in any way or anything like that. When she first met me, I could walk around really well. You know, I could bend over kinda, and I was just kind of starting this whole downhill kind of degradation of my of my back so i i don't know why she sticks around uh and deals with it. i mean this is crazy i mean this is so much to deal with and i am so thankful for her i love her so much tanya uh well actually nate do can you cue up the uh interview with tanya we we actually met tanya were you at one of your three jobs and, <laughs> and uh, spoke to you there. So how many jobs are you working right now? Um, I'm slowly getting rid of a lot of my little side stuff. So I have this, I work at Home Depot, Saturday, Sunday, Monday. Here I'm Monday through Friday. Um, I used to have just this and then six houses that I cleaned, but it, that was great, but I didn't want to have deal with having employees and all of that stuff. So. I slowly stopped doing that, and but as I've been here, I've just been getting more and more and more, and it's kind of it's become my main job, and it's taking over everything. So, but I really like it here versus my other job. It's just better. It's more calm. Tanya, what what kind of sacrifice? I, I imagine this isn't exactly how you thought life was going to go. Just as Curtis said the same thing, what kind of sacrifices have you made? because Curtis is in the state he's in. Well, I, I really, I don't go out or hang out with friends a whole lot. Um, it's just, I mean, I get asked out all the time, but I usually have to get up early for work anyway, so. But it's, um, I mean, my, I, my sister wanted me to live with her when I visited her in Germany. And that was kind of the plan for a few years, but I met Curtis right before I left to go visit her, and I did not stay in Germany and live <laughs> with her. Um, but that's but because just, you, at that point, you didn't really know. I still what, didn't know a lot, but he, yeah, I, I wanted very to be humble. here with him. Uh, that's what I'm, I'm <laughs> saying. That you know, you could easily say, "Well, I had to put off plans to do X or Y," but you're talking about something that you did because you met a guy that you liked, not necessarily because you needed to take care of this guy. Um, I guess one of the things, and hopefully I'm not, I won't embarrass you guys, but you both told me this on camera, told us this on camera, uh, <laughs> but that, that you're inevitably gonna get married uh, and that you've delayed that a bit. Tell me what, why you delayed that, why you're not engaged right now and don't have a wedding date since you both have agreed uh, yeah. that this is a good idea. <laughs> Oh, well, we haven't saved up enough money yet, for one. Um, but I guess I just want it to be a certain way, and it's just, so I don't for know. For me, just... we can go get married on my back patio. I really don't care and, you know, eat tacos from the Dollar Taco truck down the road. I know Tanya wants her wedding and all the family, you know, Trisha's little wedding. We just, I'm not in a position to earn money. Um, to save and to give her the things that she needs, you know? And until I can do that, I mean, we've kind of already said our vows to each other, you know? We're, this is it, this is forever, we're... I already call him my husband. We're stuck with each when other When people forever. ask me how Curtis is, it's, oh, how's your husband doing? And I'm like, oh, he's good. <laughs> it's just the, 
technicalities, you know, we got to get the ring, the wedding thing, and take pictures and all that kind of stuff. So. And when we spoke before, you said that if if you had been working, you'd probably be able to have done that at this point. Well, right. That's like that's the top of my list, you know. Um, as soon as I can earn some cash, I'm going to start saving and, you know, start our family. Um, we have a, a tweet in. Uh, the question is, were you told everything would be fine if you were disabled in combat or otherwise, and did you believe them? Uh, I never thought about it, ever. Um, ah, fuck, I thought I was going to die. <laughs> you know, honestly, I gave away all my shit before I left for boot camp. I gave away... I mean, when I came home on leave every time before I went to Iraq, it was kind of like, you know, bye. You don't think about getting hurt and coming back. You don't think about having to deal with everything when you come back. You're so much on this life or death, live on the edge kind of badass young man trip that you don't ever think about it, ever. Someone named uh, Regina Moore tweeted a question. It says, now that there's new VA leadership today, or yesterday there was an announcement right. that there's a new nominee, uh, is, are things going to get better? Or what, what's the end game here? Uh, you know, I'd be really surprised if things get better. I, this The system is just so stacked on top of each other with, with BS after BS after BS. It's going to take a whole... You would need a whole committee to go in there, look at this system, and look at it as like a privatized entity instead of some federal BS healthcare, and be like, look, if we were a privatized company, how would we get our customers to come back? So when you heard that this guy was appointed yesterday, or was going to be, was a nominee yesterday, did you say, all right, thank God, they're, they're no. going to fix things? No, come on. I mean, what is this man's incentive to go in there and other than goodwill, I don't know him. You know, I, I don't know who the guy is, really. Um, he probably has shitloads of money, and he's gonna get paid a shitloads of money to run the fucked up VA, and that will never trickle down to us. But you weren't like, all right, that's the catalyst we needed to. No, start fuck. This. Are you fucking kidding me? No way. Tanya, someone named Andre Rostov had a question for you. Um, how do you cope with seeing someone you care about? suffering so much and when you have so little power to help him? It's hard. Um, I mean, just, just when he's, you know, just talking about how, oh, this hurts, oh, my back hurts, this anything, it, I feel, I guess I don't even really know what I do. It's just, I just feel horrible that I can't help him any more than what I already do to provide for us, but it's just, um, I just like being, just being with him, though. I like it when I'm home and, you know, we have our own little things we do together and it's nice to just kind of how we are. We hang out and we talk and, I mean, really, that's, that's just, I think, the best thing. You know, like, I, I tell him I wish I could fix him myself, but I can't, so. But, yeah, really just being here, home with him. Someone named Christian Ponte uh, wrote, tweeted a question. Uh, he said, when you get back out there, what sort of job would you like to do? Uh, and P.S. Good luck, man. Stay strong. <laughs> uh, thank you. Um, well, I don't know. Uh, I've, I have a degree. Uh, I have a two associate's degree, one in general studies, one in science. I'm just about to finish my bachelor's degree in uh, mathematics and my minor in education. So I can go back to school and finish that. Um, you know, my medical situation has really kind of dictated kind of my future plans. I always thought I would kind of maybe do something like firefighting or forestry, you know, outdoor stuff, um, helping people, that kind of thing. I've kind of had to revamp that. I'm, uh, maybe, you know, I was kind of leaning towards education and being a teacher, but you know, I can't stand up for more than an hour, so, um, you know, my dream job to be out there, I would work on guns. I would do custom builds. I'd maybe train, teach, um, firearms courses, anything like that. Uh, and let that be a solicitation for jobs. Uh, he's uh, qualified <laughs> yeah, right. at all those yeah, things. Yeah, qualified <laughs> armor, machine gunner. 
Um, someone named Jacqueline Taboni, who I suspect is a sibling <laughs> of, of Gianna Taboni, uh, tweeted a question. Uh, she asked, what is, your fav what is your advice to all the young veterans who are still struggling to get good medical care, other than having a reporter make phone calls on your behalf? You have to make your voice known. You're, the VA will discourage you. They will, you'll file your claim and they'll deny it. You refile that thing immediately and you refile it and you refile it until you get the answer that you want. If you don't like your doctor, get rid of them and get a new doctor. If you don't like that, call patient advocacy, which I just found out about I didn't even know existed. You know, my dad told me the squeaky wheel gets oiled. You have to be that asshole that calls every day and you have to be your own advocate and you have to be professional about it. Don't call up and cuss them out. Don't say F this, F that, you know. They're going to say some shit that's going to piss you off. Say all right, very well. Call back again the next day. Be firm, be professional because as soon as you stop being professional, they are not going to answer your phone calls. Then you're really fucked. Um, someone named Jordan Terrell uh, asked, what were some of the ways that helped you return to, civ to a civilian lifestyle? So I think that's a more general question. Oh, shit. Uh, you know, I don't think I ever, I don't think you're ever going to return to a, 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 quote, civilian lifestyle. You know, you're never going to, you're never going to unlearn the shit that you've learned. You're never going to have, I personally can't go back to having a mindset of walking down the street and pretending like nothing's going to happen. Or, or not looking over my shoulder, stuff like that, you know. Um, my suggestion is take it slow. Um, don't come home and just do nothing. Come home and have a plan. You know, come home, get a hobby, get with some buddies, stay in contact with your veteran buddies because it's so easy to lose contact with those guys when you go home and do your own thing. But you'll be so surprised when you guys talk and you guys are going through the same shit, you're thinking the same thing, and don't think that when you come home it's gonna be easy. It is, the hardest thing I ever done was coming back, and you're gonna miss it, you're gonna miss the military, you're gonna wanna go back. It's, it's just, you know, you have to be comfortable in the decision that you made and where you wanna take your life, but it's, it's fucking hard. Uh, someone named Connor wrote, I'm 15 and I want to enlist, but I'm nervous about the VA and benefits. Can you give your opinion? Don't worry about that stuff. Um, you know, I, it, it sounds kind of dumb, you know, coming from me because I didn't worry about it either. But with this generation of veterans, and, and you know, we're going to take care of you guys. We're we're at the home front now. You want to join the military and you want to be a badass. You want to be the best that you can be. Don't let this bureaucratic BS stop you. Because once you join that brotherhood, you're in it for life. And that brotherhood will never abandon you, ever. Uh, one of the things that you said in the piece, which I think we cut off before you got to actually see this part, but you uh, very poignantly said you would never, you had no regrets about joining the Marines, even in your current condition. Right. Um, why? It's... I mean, you're, you're hurt, you can't work, you're in pain all day. I don't know how to describe it to someone who hasn't done it. It is like, you know, some people aren't going to like the way I phrase this, but fuck it. It is like being uh, the biggest rock band fucking rapper in the world because you think you're just a badass. Anywhere you go, you got that Marine Corps uniform on. Chicks are all over you. They want nothing but the Marine Corps. You know, that's what it's all about. Then you go to work, and you strap on some badass gear, some armor, you're in an up-armored Humvee, going down range, blasting 50 cows, blowing shit up. Greatest feeling in the world. There's nothing that you can do stateside, or in this life, other than putting yourself in combat and testing your mettle against another man that's trying to kill you or groups of individuals that are trying, there, there's nothing that compares to that, ever. You were in Iraq twice, and um, just recently, since we last saw you, Iraq has gone to shit again, right. again. Yeah. <laughs> um, does that make you, how does that sit with you as far as, you know? Oh, I don't you care. You don't care? 
these people, the Sunnis and the Shiites, have been fighting for thousands of years, and they will fight for thousands of years after we left. Go back and do your history. The ISIS insurgency group that's made up of the Sunnis, go back and research the Sunni uprising. Why do you think Iraq was so successful? Why do you think the Al Anbar province was so successful where the Marines were? The Sunnis, which were being shit on by the Shiites the whole time we were there, which were being terrorized by the Shiites, when I was there, there was kind of like this civil, about, civil war was about to break out, you know? The Sunnis, which is the minority in Iraq, they rose up and said, you know what, America, come give us weapons. We're gonna fight these assholes. We don't want them in our country anymore. We're gonna help you. So what do we do? We gave them weapons. We turned them all into Iraqi police, all into Iraqi army. My last deployment, I went there and the guys that we were fighting yesterday, I'm serving next to you, you know, and they're living on our base, so. But the fact that, that the situation has deteriorated so badly, does that make you question whether it was all worth it for you to sacrifice your body for this. I didn't join the Marine Corps to liberate the Iraqi people. They're their own fucking people. They're their own country. They want freedom they can fucking fight for. I don't care. I got out of high school, Iraq was already going on. If it wasn't me, then who else? You know what I mean? I was a young man. I was 18 at the time. I wasn't talking to my folks. I've, I've been kicked out of the house. I wanted to go and fight, that's it. You know, where it was, I didn't care. Uh, I wanna go back to your, your own health right now. Uh, after we left you, uh, you had an appointment with your surgeon. Mm -hmm. uh, what happened with that? Um, well, he met with me um, kind of like in this weird, awkward consultation. I'd never met with a surgeon. Usually you meet with like the, a sit, like the nurse or whatever. Um, so he kind of put me in this like back room, you know, away from everyone. He sat down and talked to me. He told me he's going to show me images of my back and all that kind of stuff. He never did. Um, he basically, you know, I described to him, I told him my pain, told him what was going on, you know, what was going on post surgery. He explained to me, you know, without looking at anything, without looking at any images or nothing, that uh, um, he believes the surgery was a success, that it was, I'm. It's kind of hard for me. I'm not a medical professional. I'm not going to sit there and argue with this man who's telling me he's a surgeon and he's he did a successful job. All I can tell him is I'm in pain. This is what's going on. What's next? Um, I wanted to uh, cue up a voicemail message. What happened after your appointment, we wanted to speak to the surgeon and figure out if he could explain to us what your status was. And uh, we got a message back from his assistant. Uh, mm -hmm. And uh, well, here's what she said. Nate, can you play it? So I could not find anybody by the name of Curtis Shanley in our system. But if you want to give me a call back and leave me the um, spelling of the patient's name so I can just double check. Otherwise, uh, you need, if, if you know he's a veteran, you need to contact our public affairs department. Thank you. So uh, basically what she said, in addition to saying, uh, which is fair, that she couldn't talk to us about your case. Right. She said that she actually had no record of you being a veteran and right. your name was some sort of uh, <laughs> mystery to her. Um, right. What's your take on that? I don't know. What do you say? What do you say to that? You know, now, uh, now I don't exist. Apparently, you know, that's the games that, that's the games you play at the VA. You know, but it's. I mean, you, you're suggesting that it's some sort of conspiracy to scrub you. More likely, they just. Well, I'm. I'm sure. Look, there's no way that you don't look up my name and type it into the VA registry and not see my name. There's no way. I'm at the VA every week. So I don't know if she just, how do, how do you even come up with that answer? There's other than making it up or you're just completely inept at your job. So you pick either they're lying or they're completely fucking and lame. That's, and that's, you've had similar things over your five years of dealing with the VA. Oh, or, I mean, it's, this is the absurdity that you deal with. You call one, call the specialist. We don't even have records of you being a veteran. 
how do you, how do I circumnavigate that? Um, Tanya, uh, have you been around when Curtis has been trying to make these calls and is put on hold? And have you, have you witnessed all this? Yes, I, yes, yeah, I'm home sometimes. Yeah. And what what happens? And describe how that plays out. It, well, well, he's he's always nice and professional. The advice he gives, he does what he says. Um, but I can tell and see his face how upset he's getting because it's it's just a dance of circles they go through every time. It's always the same. You know, and so it's, oh, we can't find you. Oh, we lost this. Or, you know, oh, you didn't really call. Or just, yeah. You know, it, it's always the same every time. Yeah, you, you never know, called us. I get that all the time. You know, oh, we lost. You know, we must have lost it. Or, oh, the doctor didn't send us the note or give us the prescription or whatever. It's just, it's just a big game. So I thought we could maybe wind up with a uh, a nice uh, tweet from someone named uh, Jordan, um, who asks, Curtis, in your opinion, what can the average person with limited time do to help make sure the vets are taken care of? What, basically asking, how can we help? Um, you know, get out there. Go visit your local VA. Take 10 minutes from your weekend. Go down there and talk to some of these men. You know, they just want someone to talk to you someone to hang out with them. Go spend 10 minutes of your day in agony down at the VA, and that will motivate you to get out there and maybe politically, you know, call your representatives. Get out there. I, you know, I'm not big into this whole tweet thing and all. Uh, hashtag whatever. I don't fucking know. But until people get mad, until people make a big deal out of it, it's just going to fade away. You know, it's going to go back into obscurity. Afghanistan's coming to a close, and once Afghanistan comes to a close, this VA thing, if it's not fixed by then, those young men that are right now in Afghanistan, they are going to be so desperate for help when they get home. You know, I've already gone through it. I'm already in it. I'm going through it. So let's stop it now with me and, and get these guys some freaking help. You know, that's what I'm concerned about. So you want, you want to do something? Make yourself known to the veterans out there. We're nice people, you know. We got stories to tell, and if you want to hear some crazy, good old time stories and meet some really nice people, go hang out at the VA. Go buy someone a cup of coffee, you know. That's all we want. We're people. We're people look at us because we've been in the military and we've been in combat. They, you know, they don't know how to talk to us. We're people. We were people before we joined the military. We're regular, average day citizens. You know, I play video games, and I'm a nerd. I'm, a, you know, I read fantasy books. I'm a normal American. In the military is just, you know. Do you feel, so? You feel like people baby step around? Yeah, you guys. We're not victims. You know, we're we signed up knowing full well. Well, it's not like I signed up and thought they were going to be shooting rubber bullets at me, or I was going to be carrying pillows in my pack. I knew I was going to be carrying hundreds of pounds. I knew I was going to get hurt. I knew I was probably going to get, you know, I'm lucky I came back with all my limbs and, you know, my friends didn't. So, um, it's, we can fix the VA. We can fix the VA, but you don't need to baby us. We're grown men. We know that there's a problem. We just need bigger help than what we can muster together ourselves. We're tired of waiting in the waiting rooms and just bitching to each other about it. Right. Tanya, is there anything you want to add before we finish up? Well, I, I believe Curtis will get better one day and be able to do more of what he wants to do. And, and yeah, I just, I love him just as much as he loves me and I'm you're by his side to stick him through it and I'm, I can't wait till that day comes. Someday. <laughs> <laughs> Anything you want to add before we... Um, well, I just want to say thank you guys. Uh, you know, I was real nervous when this was going to come out, what kind of feedback I was going to get from my fellow Marines that I serve with and uh, the feedback has just been overwhelmingly positive and um, Man, I really appreciate that because sometimes I feel alone out there, you know. And uh, I just want to say thanks to all my 
Marine Corps buddies. Uh, thank you to my good friends, uh, Sean and William, that always call me to see how I'm doing. Um, and, and thank you to Kevin and Lindsay uh, for always being there. And uh, they're going through the same shit. And I mean, just thank you for everything. I know it seems like I'm going through crazy shit, but it's nothing compared to some of these other Marines, what they're going through, what some of these other sailors and soldiers are going through, you know? So. Well, thanks so much for sharing your story with us. Hopefully uh, it helps people. And uh, thanks to everyone for uh, tuning in and, and, and watching this. Um, you can follow Vice News on, on Twitter uh, and please subscribe on YouTube for more reports like this. Thanks very much.